Bharat Mantapam is a dream come true for India. Yes. It's unbelievable. Very big place. On the internet, you can set up a business, you can reach consumers in any part of the world. India is the third largest digital power, has done very well. By 2025, India will have the largest number of tech people in the world for any country. What I'm worried is lack of adequate capital. I want Indian capital and Indians to own the future. Gandhiji has said, this desh mein sarkar vyapari hai, us desh mein janta bikari hai. Because you can't compete with the state in business. Prime Minister Modi has done a lot. I mean, I credit uh, the vision of Star Digital India, Stand Up India, Start Up India to him. Welcome to Mahakum Startup 2024. I want your first thought when you came here. First is the whole feel of this place itself. How was your feeling? How was the whole Well, whole I think uh, Bharat Mantapam is a dream come true for India. Yes. It's unbelievable. Very big place. Fantastic convention center. We travel around the world. We see many things around the world. And we are proud that we have something like this in Delhi. We have one in Mumbai, in the Geo yes. Center. I think India is building these places where people could come in large numbers. People all over the world could come. And we could have discussion, meetings, business, do business in a very beautiful setting. Yes. And I think it's fabulous. And uh, when you come here, you meet young people. I hear that 8,000 people have come. Yes. They should put us up, put up their plenary in the bigger room. Yes. 3,600 seater, but they did not. But a lot of energy, a lot of young people, a lot of excitement. A fabulous uh, place to be. So you have been someone who is synonymous to understanding business. A man who's known a great businessman, a philanthropist. How do you relate to the term business? And now that is being read as entrepreneur, startup. How do you Look, see that transition? Look, all businessmen are entrepreneurs. Okay. Okay. So it's a new all term. No, no, all businessmen are entrepreneurs because who is an entrepreneur? Entrepreneur is a person who starts a business. Yes. And that is entrepreneurship. He takes a risk. He brings in capital. He provides goods or services, he or she. So every businessman is an entrepreneur. Okay. And when you grow up to a particular size or bigger and you have processes, then oh, you become normally. a businessman. Okay. So businessmen are normally traders. Okay. Our entrepreneurs are people who build businesses in industry, services, etc., who don't buy and sell. Okay. So I think entrepreneurship is a risk-taking ability that people have. Startup founders are entrepreneurs who are using technology to disrupt traditional businesses Okay. And the core of whose function is technology. So they work on a technology platform. It's important to understand why this is important. In 1750, India and China were the richest countries in the world. Yes. Because we had a <coughs> large artisanal population, highly skilled people. We produced goods and we shipped them all around the world and yes. we are a rich country. Yes. Then the steam engine was invented in Great Britain. Yes. And that led to the rise of the machine age and mechanization. And the Europeans came and colonized India and uh, India and China for raw material, took it there, manufactured, destroyed our industry because they had, uh, you know, military power. And they made a market out of India and destroyed what we're doing. And we are colonized and impoverished. Yes. Forty-five trillion dollars of wealth went away from India, 1757 to 1947. And uh, we became one of the poorest countries in the world. Yes. Now, Europe became the richest country, had the two great wars. And soon thereafter, you know, after the great Second World War, the world became free of colonization because of India. Yes. Now, in the last 15 years, we have a new phenomena, that is the rise of the internet. Yes. And we are in the midst of the digital revolution. Digital revolution. And we need to understand this very well because the biggest challenge for business was reaching consumers. Now, you are a producer in some part of India, you've got to reach consumers somewhere else. So, you need to build a global supply chain which is physical. And the people who control the global supply chain are the supply chain, retailers and wholesalers determine what you do. So it's difficult to reach consumers. Now, the people who control the global supply chain are mainly from the Western countries yes. and they've been the dominant economic power. Now with the internet, out of we 8 billion people on the planet, 5.5 billion people have a mobile phone, 5.25 billion people are the, you know, on the internet. On the internet, you can set up a business, you can reach consumers any part of the world, synchronously, asynchronously, 24 into 7. And you can get entertainment, you can get financial services, you can get uh, education, you can uh, get, uh, you know, uh, any, any advice on health or education or anything else. And all that is available, so the field has become level now yes. because you don't have the challenge of going to supply chain. So you can be in any remote part of any part of the, any country and interact with global consumers all around the world. And that's important. And the supply chain providers have gone to the back end like a DHL or a FedEx or anybody else because they can 
they connect you and take your goods and sell and do everything else with global payment services rich video the whole thing has turned so we're in the midst of the industrial revolution and today india is the third largest digital power and all these startups are using technology using the internet to reach consumers in india and outside india and what india has done in building digital public goods like aadhar like upi kyc all like the ondc all the is something unique because no country has done that all this have been developed by volunteers kept into public utilities so nobody has a monopoly it opens up the system and young uh, you know startups can come and interact with consumers using the technology uh, almost free of cost so we got a great advantage so i think india is the third largest digital power has done very well and will dominate the world in the next 5 uh, to 7 years i just want to end this uh, uh, question by saying uh, by 2025 india will have the largest number of tech people in the world for any country right now we are next to the us we have about 5 and 1/2 6 million people us globally has 10 million people uh, by 2025 26 we could have 6 to 7 million people in the country so in country will be the largest bangalore has 2.3 23 lakh people is the largest collection of tech talent in the world more than Indoor silicon world. valley now all these things have happened in a remarkably short period of time and we must get full credit for this and our young people are becoming tech entrepreneurs in about 650 districts or so they are using technology to the mobile app reaching out to consumers uh, for any country to develop we need three things human capital which we have got now in abundance in the tech world Digital too revolution. we need uh, physical capital in the form of uh, telecom links mobile connectivity 5g and all that we got in abundance we need financial capital financial capital is where we lack because not enough money from india is going into startups and innovation for example there's been an investment of 145 billion dollars from 2014 till now out of which only about 15% is indian money that's because the big institutions like lic and others don't invest i don't understand yes. why i mean we got the canadian pension fund ontario pension fund come and invest here lic has got a 55 60 lakh crore balance sheet they don't made an investment so they are selling they they are not investing in the future of india the future of india which is in startups and technology is being funded by foreign capital they're going to make enormous amount of money i think I, we have to set this right how have you said uh, two questions straight to me one you're saying digital india has a direct connectable startup india is how i understand otherwise absolutely <laughs> let me tell you in 2015 when prime minister modi stood up in the red fort and said digital india startup india stand up india he really it was it was music to our ears it transformed india Of course, Lutyens Delhi was very skeptical. Yeah, what happened in digital India, startup India, stand-up India? Even now, I think many people in Delhi don't understand it. We understand it in Bangalore, in the south, in Gurgaon, and other places because he gave primacy to young entrepreneurs and to the future, and the future was digital. Then he helped build Aadhaar, he helped build UPI, he helped build KYC, created the system, opened five fifty crore bank accounts, transferred money to people. About thirty five lakh crores have been transferred. He set up the fast track and done everything else in a remarkably short period of time. It's unbelievable what you have achieved, and that has created the base on which our entrepreneurs can grow and flourish. The only thing that has not been done adequately is the supply of capital, and for that I think you know regulators have to change and allow capital to come in. but when you talk about uh, the businesses taking up this stand with digital india coming in what are the places where they really lose it out because we see startup also feel vulnerable at no, no, certain stage look, out of 117000 startups 21000 have got funded yes the failure rate is no greater or lesser than what happens in america okay yes some of the bigger ones have blown up for various reasons those things happen all the time i mean you had enron blow up right in the richest country yes. in the world I mean, the paragon of virtue suddenly destroyed. So these things happen. I don't think we should. Uh, uh, these are sporadic, individual events. I don't think it's due to any systemic issues. It's a young, growing system. They have to mature. They have to run. They have to do well. They have to institutionalize, and uh, they have to grow up. It has to happen. It takes time. So I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried is lack of adequate capital, because to me, I want Indian capital and Indians to own the future. See, after liberalisation, the software industry grew up. Yes. Indians still own it. Then after that, we had the telecom industry. The yes. Indians, Indians own the capital. We had the pharma industry grow up. Indians still own it, though it sells. Then we had infrastructure. That's okay. Foreign capital owns our, you know, roads and all. That's fine because it's going to stay in this country. And the next was the digital revolution, yes. where we have sold our future. And it's because our institutions are not able to understand that. Our taxes are very perverse because we still have something called angel tax, which harasses people, which must go. So a lot of things have to be done. Prime Minister Modi has done a lot. 
I mean, I credit uh, the vision of Star- Digital India, Stand Up India, Start Up India to him because he has used that to reach every consumer. Because he alone, of all the political leaders in this country, has understood that we are a country of 140 crore people, 600,000 villages, 10,000 towns, or whatever it is. And the only way to reach every citizen is through technology and the mobile phone. So here you see the regulatories and the government policies have to become less conservative on certain aspects. It's not about being conservative, yes. it's being less cassette and less controlling. See, you must open up where they open up. For example, recently, the RBI issued a circular to say that uh, any bank which has invested in the fund and lent to them, you've yes. got to provide for it. It was a knee-jerk reaction. Was there an abuse? Yes. They could identify three or four players who are abu- abusing and uh, gone after them. But few black sheep should not yeah, be Yeah, but the entire disturbing. system has come to a standstill. So many banks have invested in fund, they're yes. not able to pay the calls. They're not able to pay the calls. Should all the banks, greatest banks in this country be called defaulters? I mean, there should be consultation because it destroys the credibility of the system. We are an open system where investors overseas invest. Now they're all saying your banks have invested, why they're not paying the money and the calls? How can you, then RBI still not clarify that? We need, we need to stop this knee-jerk reaction and have a consultative process. So when you're saying investors are, especially are you talking about the banks also in the country when they don't trust this digital move because they've had this pressure of See, dealing with the bankruptcy? Not, banks should not invest in uh, ca- giving capital to startups. Okay. That's not a job. Their job is to give working capital. Okay. I'm talking about long-term investors like LIC. I'm talking about possibly some of the mutual funds who have space for unlisted companies. They're doing it now, family funds and others. Yes. All right. So I'm not talking about and pension funds. Yes. I'm not talking about the banks giving money because that's not their job. Okay. So what are the things that you think the young startup now in the space that you see they grow with the IT and technology as an edge to take them to the next space? That are we growing in the startup space in the right sectors or have we got into a space where it is more driven by opening apps and taking up, uh, you know, easy driving, make it successful through the marketing, it works very fast. Are the sectors being chosen right by the startups to get See, I don't think we should momentum? bother about sectors being chosen and not chosen. Or the long term it... ecosystem yeah, does No, no, it I'll just... explain. The entrepreneurs can decide what they want to do because they're putting the money you're not giving any money as okay. government or directing them nobody should direct what we should do as policy makers is identify those areas of technology which are going to disrupt our future okay. for example electric vehicles we have the pli scheme now you must fund many companies into electric vehicles to so go to the ecosystem like china has done china is the dominant electric vehicle con- uh, country in the world they've been doing it for 15 20 years chips now we got the chip factories they'll take some time but bangalore is the largest semiconductor chip design uh, design, testing and embedded software system in the world. 3,50,000 people with 280 company plus companies are involved. Now, why don't we give funding to them to design the next level of chips independently instead of working for global companies and creating the IP for them? We need capital there. So, so we I need to with chips. Identify, for example, AI. Large yes. learning models have to be developed. We have to fund public institutions and other companies to develop the Sam Altman got a lot of money. He created uh, Chat GBT because that's funded by everybody and he dominates the world, right? So we have to create that and we know that quantum computing. We have to set up facilities for quantum computing. We have to invest, okay? Disruptive technologies like genomics, okay? Biotechnology areas. So all these have to be invested in by public money because our basic problem is not enough money is going into research. And R&D is driven by public money and private money. But public money should go into areas where private money will not go and cannot go. I'll tell you a story. I was president of the All India Man Association, went to NASA. And we looked at NASA, they took us all around. And it was an exhilarating experience to go to the great place, yes. uh, which started the space, space industry in the world. And they told us, we will invest in areas where private capital will not go because we don't want to invest in areas uh, to compete with the private uh, private sector using the taxpayers' money. You understand what it is? So that's a very smart way of investing. No, that's in the right way. way to, for example, DRDO has got huge amount of money. Yes. They should open up. Now they're opening up. 20 years too late. Uh, ISO is now opening ISO up. ISO is now opening so up. So all these public institutions, CSIR, they must yes. all open up and understand they're creating IP with public money for India. They must license this out, work with private and companies. And people should not be going to foreign else. companies they cannot for be, research. Uh, they cannot be a, a place which is, uh, you know, which, which, which believes that they're the only sole deliverers of everything else. True. So they must open up because they're using public money. It's not their personal money. The IP created there should go to the public and license to everybody, Indian companies. And let Indian companies grow. Because you create IP and use it in Indian industry, Indian industry becomes productive. Yes. That's how the United States grew. That's what we got to do. But they keep it cloistered within themselves. So interaction between our R&D and the private sector should expand. Because remember, 
the public sector is ancillary to private sector and to all of us so you think private sector cannot invest much in the r&d or it is limited no they can't in invest they can't invest more because they have to you know earn they have to earn and the once they come to a size they're yes. investing for example some of the largest uh, companies are investing huge amount of money the pharma industry yes, is pharma a, industry pharma is industry coming industry to that thing it industry yes. is investing huge amount of money a lot of money is going into but is inadequate okay because a lot of pri- public money has to go for example we were promised a 50000 crore national research fund as part of the new education policy nothing yes. has happened so r&d is of prime importance for the country for the next 5 10 years to build innovation so we can become a very good player on the world because in the digital revolution we got a great edge we have started we are a dominant player we got the human capital now we need r and d to be at the cutting edge yes. the cutting edge is where we got to lead the world for example 6g is coming we must invest in creating standards for 6g we must be part of the standard setting body because once you set the standard manufacturing goes according to the standard somebody who set the standard as an edge china is investing huge money in standard setting bodies all across technology uh, all the ip protocol so i think we got to do that and that's why we need public money and the public money cannot be given to only public sector enterprises for example today the iits get a lot of the money for r and d why can't all of the engineering colleges get on a quantity basis because it Open has got a system. repute it has got it's not repute. about repute yes. it's about a kind of thinking that says oh only public sector should come because public money but the public money is paid by us the taxpayers our money yes. there's nothing like public money is our money you're taking our money giving it to your institutions and they are not uh, talking to us as industry and taxpayers and giving us innovation so you've got to change that, that money and not using it see look public money invested in r and d and everything should be available to everybody equally based on competition and based on qualifying and the standards have to be very clear so anybody can compete so why should only some people get grants on a nomination basis yes. so we got to change this mentality you know go Gandhi ji has said this desh mein sarkar vyapari hai us desh mein janta bikari hai because hmm. you can't compete with the state in business you can't no can a private engineering college compete in an iit which gets a lot of public money you can't compete their job is to do the administration they better no, stick to the yeah, role yeah they can't get the money this is yes. you pump in money can private sector uh, industry we want private universities to come up True. we want they should also get in the us i think ppp model work, works not better ppp see the grant making should be across the board without discrimination okay and don't give it to only your institution and don't uh, you know start feeding them drips and because they got limited capacity we want a broad sector of industry to develop and making quotas for even the grants that yes, i mean that should all we should open up the system because you see people must understand india belongs to a people india belongs to an entrepreneurs india belongs to a consumer they are the ones who pay taxes you consolidate the taxes and use it for public benefit you open it for everybody on a quantity basis subject to little bit of governance and all that is interesting but don't keep pumping to your own money i think that is what prime minister modi has changed yes. for example in the defense industry today private sector has come in yes, a big way completely, 60% completely. of all the armaments is built by the private sector otherwise they used to import and you know all kind of things used to happen now why have we not built a jet engine jet engine has to be built uh, by you know private sector they give it to hr so you're saying leave the business them. to the people who know how to do the business but you be a catalyst you be and a catalyst. don't discriminate between public and private treat everybody as indians So I have to ask you to leave us with one thought because you've given such a perspective to understand things in a simple way is uh, when we are looking at uh, making a startup or starting a journey in the startup world your vision should be how long as you said look forward to what is coming around in technology you went to 6G for how many years or decades can no, you go forward to No I think about 10 to, to 30 years 10 to 30 years yes. to to build vision. a great company will take maybe 12 15 years yes and to grow the company will take another 10 15 years look at uh, Bill Gates He spent 25 so you have to years. assess a vision that can look forward to 30 no, years ahead of no, no, technology no, no. coming. You have around. to have a vision which solves a problem that everybody has, so that you can run a business. Okay. Then you got to create a revenue model. Then you got to have technology to grow the revenue model. Then you got to market and you got to create people and grow the business. For the business to become dominant, to come to some size, it takes time. 10 12 15 years that i have a catch situation for you the last one the technology is growing at a different pace now it is changing at a much faster pace yeah, than but if i have a technology coming i will also change so the adaptability has to go with that it is pace. there it is there so because are we you ready know, for I, that of adaptability course, of course all business so now now you know every kid in bangalore is doing an ai first company i mean everybody is saying ai karta hai ai karta i don't know <laughs> what ai is that but they're all using ai that's True. good 
See, so, once you are in technology, it is not that you can uh, uh, not adopt new kinds of technology. It is by you it can. is deemed naturally you can. It's not natural, but you can. You and can. people do because they compete. Because today I am running some uh, uh, business, and somebody else says I am doing AI. Kar rahe. I also will go to AI. You and have my to. My consumers have to do it. The banks are pushing AI into the business. The software service companies are doing it. It's spreading. See, AI has got three components. One is creating an algorithm. Algorithm is very specialized. It requires, you know, PhDs and others, which are small number. US has the largest number. India has to develop. Indians are going working US companies. Second is, you know, training people in use of those algorithms, which India has the second largest number of True. AI trained people. And the third is creating vertical AI. industry specific ai can you have ai large learning models or ai in financial services can you have it in uh, let us say health services can you have it in genomics specific can you have it specific to the somewhere? sector and ah, the requirement there we have an advantage because there the money required will be smaller you require domain expertise you need large amounts of data which is available and that we can do for example arogya setu has the largest quantum of data on the human condition in the world wow. because about 70 million 7 crores i think uh, Uh, operations or something are taken place so all the data is available i hope the data is structured that should be given open so people can find out trends for example there's a company in bangalore which creates an iot mat uh, beneath the hospital bed to create an icu everywhere wow and that monitors five vital attributes and they collected data for the last one and a half two years now they can see your uh, heartbeat in a particular pattern and the pattern fits a pattern which they have seen with 3 months later leads to a heart attack they can give you an early warning signal because when a heart attack happen there's a certain pattern in heartbeats so you got all the you patterns for, the vital for, for about thousands of people and uh, you can see the pattern and put in el guy and the el guy will say hey man 2 months later this could happen have a look have a look one month later it could happen now look at that it couldn't happen without uh, you know having some ai algorithms or which are creating database without creating a you know a uh, uh, iot based bed and they using vibrations of human body to collect the data True. because those uh, uh, founders came from the racing car industry wow they worked in the racing car industry so they could understand it. how the heartbeat goes exactly, up no, when exactly they could understand how vibrations, vibrations can be used to check up the engine condition and they using that look at the brilliance look at of the, the brilliance it just it sounds so cool so all the things are there but we need to put capital see capital for existing businesses capital for new businesses fund r&d so that we can be sitting on the high table see today elon musk has put a lot of money for the ev vehicles i mean we should have had ev funded yes, things much much yeah, much, much earlier. earlier than he could yeah. have done i mean uh, battery industry is dominated by china yes. all the yeah, you know to go in the transition yeah, rare metals are invested we by china why couldn't he go by air, rare metals all over see easy for me to talk okay because at <laughs> the government there's a problem of allocation yes Now I'm I'm putting the point to government that the state government the central government spend 85 to 90 lakh crores of money a year. Why can't both of you put across 1 lakh crore a year on R&D? It's a small amount of money. You know central government can put 50,000 crores and uh, you know uh, state governments each one of them can put 50,000 crores across 29 states. 1000 crores 2000 crores. For a for a state like UP with the seven lakh crores budget, one thousand crores is peanuts. Nothing. Why can't we do that? We got to think big and allocate, and that allocation has to come at a substantial size and create industry which can grow, and open up existing R and D institutions to everybody else as being done. So a lot of lot of good work has happened, but we are impatient. <laughs> because we want to be a dominant economic power to pace up very fast but thank you so much sir for this great perspective and i think you've run through a lot of ideas in my head now thank you. but thank you so much for leading thank us and understanding thank startup you. india in a different way thank you thank you